Here's a question posed to me by many magicians that I never even considered, never really thought of. They said to me, what do you do to practice? How do you practice? And, and I didn't even really think about that. Practicing magic kind of comes naturally to me. It's, it's a passion, right? If you love it, you tend to do it. It's the same as if you like you know, skiing. You're probably going to go skiing. It's not really practicing. It's, it's fun. So there's different types of practicing. I think that at the beginning, when you start off in magic, you're overwhelmed. There's so much material. You're like a kid in a candy store. You want to just next thing, next thing. What's the next thing? What's the next thing? And sometimes you do that. And the risk is that you don't perfect each routine. You don't really give it your all before you move on to the next thing. And so you have a lot of just, you know, kind of half completed tricks where you do them, but you don't do them all that well. You can do a lot of them, but you don't do any one of them incredibly well. And I think that's, that's a, that's a big risk to take, especially at the beginning. I think that if you're just getting started in magic, learning the fundamentals is critical. Practicing those key moves over and over and over. For example, if you're doing cards, all the various card controls, knowing how to establish a pinky break, a thumb break, you know, do double undercuts, do the pass, do the key component moves that everything else is built upon. I think it's important to practice those just in the trick. If you're just practicing a trick, use certain moves that require practice. You could just take the card, find it, and put it to the top, but instead, double undercut it to the top. Practice in the middle of performing tricks for yourself. Next up, there's practicing by yourself, and then I consider some performances to be practicing. For me nowadays, the vast majority of my practice is me performing for real audiences. I mean, I do shows virtually six or seven nights a week, sometimes during the days as well. So that is my practice. That's where I perfect and hone routines. Of course, when I learn something new, I don't just take it out in front of an audience, I do it on my own. I go to the people that I care about, usually you know, girlfriend, family members, friends, and I'll debut it with them, see how they do. They tend to be my hardest audiences, my, my harshest critics, because they've seen me, they've known me for years. If I see that it's working well with them, I move it up, and I step it up, and then I start practicing for my real audiences. Then it takes time to refine. I practice in front of a mirror. I think that's a great way to practice. Today's digital era, you can take a video camera that's super cheap, a little Flip HD or a little you know, webcam on your computer and watch yourself do it. I mean, even if you're gonna post it online, be careful about posting online in case you're not doing it well so you don't expose, but watch yourself. See what the audience would see and see how it looks. I mean, that's the beauty. You can get such cheap technology now that you can take your, your camera phone and see what you're doing. Put it on video and, and practice. Practice in front of the mirror. But there is no substitute for going out and doing it for real people. That's what exposes the weaknesses. You, little things that you didn't realize are gonna start to crop up. For example, you're so focused on your method and your moves that you're neglecting your presentation. You go into the whole explaining what you're doing now, you put the card back, and if I just cut and do, you don't wanna be explaining what you're doing. You want your presentation to work itself. The trick happens, you're presenting. So you have patter, a script, whatever you're gonna follow, and you don't wanna be going with the details, you wanna be making a magic moment. That happens when you get comfortable with the handling. Do it at home as much as you can, but then don't be shy. Go out there, perform for other people. Even if it's just, you know, your family, or even if it's just friends and people that are close to you so you're not embarrassed, that's what's gonna help overcome the initial anxiety. Because it's, it's nerve wracking when you're learning a new trick to go do it for people who may judge you if you fail. It looks very bad, it's, very, it's one of those moments that people, that's why public speaking is one of the number one fears that people have out in the world because Nobody likes to look embarrassed or be ashamed. So you build up in steps, in increments. And then that feeling when you do it right, that gives you a huge boost to go do it again and do it again. And that's what we feed off of. Most magicians, we feed off that energy of performing and making people happy, making them be amazed and impressed. That's our job. That's what we do.